So the next, the next speaker, Yeva Letner, um, she is painting the web with CSS. And uh, I always thought, like, like many years ago, like five years ago, I, I always thought, uh, like, drawing with CSS doesn't make sense because I, I, there, there were some some uh, really basic uh, features in CSS, like background colors, like so, something like this. But now there are so many of them, like masking and regions and like everything. E plus SVG, plus other techniques. So now it probably makes sense to draw using CSS in some cases. So we'll, Yeva will tell you more, but please, please go back to the, to the main stage, um, to the main room, and we will start very, very soon, almost now. Let's go. Hi. Okay, you can see it now. Uh, I chose the pink not because it's like company color or conference color here. It happened uh, by accident. Also, uh, my color blocking doesn't have anything to do with the branding, although I'm very grateful for it because it all fits together and it's very awesome. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for coming and thank you for having me here. Where. <laughs> Uh, we're now going to paint the web. What do I mean by that? I mean, I'm actually going to show you how I draw using CSS, which might sound bizarre and completely useless. And I promise you, I will tell you why I'm doing it and why it makes sense, at least to me. So bear with me through the parts where you're thinking, why? Because I have a slide for that. <laughs> so. A little bit about me. My name is Eva Letna. I live in Vienna and I work for a, a fintech startup called Chillbill. I'm the front end developer there and I'm also UI lead. So I'm responsible for everything to look nice and pretty and uh, be accessible. And I'm also a coding artist. Why is the artist in quotations? Because this is my self portrait. So, yeah. Uh, I also once tried to apply to art school and they told me I would never be an artist. So I'm an artist now. Okay, I remember my first line of code. I remember the first little program I wrote. It was a tiny little JavaScript function that would display the first 10 digits of the Fibonacci sequence. And I remember feeling like I had created life. I actually felt like God. Because it was magic to me, I did something and the browser showed me something really abstract that I had just created. And probably for some of you, if you think back to your first lines of code and to your first program that you wrote, you're feeling the same way, that it once held magic and that it once was really, really special. In our day-to-day -day lives as developers, what happens to us is we go to work, we see the issue tracker, we take the issue on the top, we code the feature, we make the pull request, and we do this again and again. Rinse and repeat every single day. So what happens pretty quickly when you start becoming a developer is that the magic is gone because it works. You do the same thing over and over again, you become very comfortable with it, and it becomes routine. And it's not as magical as it once was. So what I tried to do for myself from the very beginning was to keep the magic alive by doing stuff that code wasn't actually intended to do. So I tried to make side projects and to create things that don't make sense in the real world, but that make me love code more and that make me remember the magic of my first little line of code and that make me have this feeling that I once felt when I started coding. And all of us that are sitting here, we are all creators, and we tend to forget that too. But whether you are a front-end developer, a back-end developer, I assume most of you are front-end developers because you're at a CSS conference. We create every single day. We create awesome, cool things. Might be something small, might be something really huge that has an impact, but we create something. And let's not forget that we actually participate to this wonderful thing that is the internet. And we add on it, and we create, and we make beautiful things. 
And also, I love CSS, and probably most of you do too. Uh, it's the language I first got comfortable with when I started coding ages ago. Um, yeah, it was very long ago. I think I started my first website when I was 12 or 14. And I immediately fell in love with CSS. That was back in the day when we had still inline CSS. We didn't have external style sheets yet. So that was long ago. Also, there was the time of GeoCities, if, everyone, if, if anyone still remembers. And you're probably feeling a bit old right now. People who don't know what this is, you are very young. <laughs> so you can now reasonably tell how old I am when I started <laughs> doing GeoCities. This was the first graphic I created with just CSS. I found this one graphic on Instagram. It's an Instagram account that uh, shows graphics of cacti. I like cacti, and I love this graphic. And I thought, that looks easy. I can do that with CSS. And so I sat down one night and drew it with code. This is no SVG. This is no JPEG. This is no image file, this is just CSS. It has a gradient and it has a couple of blocks. It has some transforms and it has some skews. Other than that, this is just plain CSS. And it was so much fun. And it was a really great experience to be able to do that with code without using a graphics uh, program. Because secret, I have no idea how to do an illustrator. I, I try sometimes, but I fail miserably. It's not my tool. So I'm a lot faster doing this with code and then taking a screenshot and pretending like I did it with uh, Illustrator. So yeah, this, this was, I did that, I think, one and a half years ago or two years ago, and I posted it on CodePen. And people liked it, and people shared it immediately. And I was freaking out because I thought, this is just a little thing. It became a whole movement. People started to do this too and to take dribble shots and make them into CSS graphics. One day I, I, I was feeling a bit down and I thought I would make something happy. And so I wanted to do a windmill. Little did I know that I had no idea how to make the rotors rotate. Because when you rotate them all the same way, they go really wonky and you need a transform origin to make them move around the middle. So I had to learn and research a transform origin, which took a little bit, but now I know it. So I use these graphics uh, to teach myself new skills, and I now use transform origin in my day-to-day -day work as well. So I learn stuff that I need for work by doing something ridiculous, and that is also what I want to uh, tell you in this talk that there are ways to learn something useful by doing something useless. But we're actually here to draw something fun and we're gonna make a zombie head. <laughs> this is a zombie. I know zombies are kind of over now. I hope you forgive me. I'm bringing them back though. Okay, so let's talk about shapes. In CSS, we have one shape. We have a rectangle. There is not much more that we can do if we just talk about basic CSS. I'm not talking masking or uh, clip path for this talk. I'm just going to do the very basics of CSS, which is what I use mostly to create my graphics. So shapes, we have rectangles. They are super basic. We, have, we can make them bigger, smaller. We can drag them off the screen. What we can also do is border, radius, if I can type. Okay, we can do a border radius with 100% that makes it a circle. Do it with 10%, it makes it around the corners. If we do pixels, it makes it around the corners. You get the idea. What we can also do is we can add on to that and say 25 pixels, 60 pixels, make that more. Yeah, and then we have the basics of our zombie's head. Maybe give it a little more height. Oops. Okay, so this would be the basic, sorry, the basic shape of the head that I did for my zombie. 
and now I have to click out of here. So, okay, we also have triangles as shapes. So I just lied to you. I said we only have rectangles, but actually triangles are parts of rectangles because triangles consist of the border of a rectangle that doesn't have height or width. So this is a rectangle with zero height, zero width, and border. So we can also edit this, make it like a little bit scoot. Maybe not. OK. Um, and now we only want to show one of those. So what we do is. Uh, pro tip, don't try to type transparent when you're live coding on stage because it's a really long word and you get typos. So I copied it in the clipboard. Um, so now we have one rectangle. It's a little bit skewed, but we can use it for whatever reason we want to. This is actually something that I like to use a lot. This is also something that I like to use in my day-to-day -day work. Um, yeah, just because rectangles are nice at the moment, and I don't want to use SVGs for many things when I can just use an empty div or a pseudo class with it. So if we combine a couple of shapes together, we can already see our zombie head, and the little pink corner uh, is a brain, and it's hot pink, which is my favorite CSS color. I, I always assume People have favorite CSS named colors. Mine is hot pink, in case you wanted to know. Let's talk about pseudo elements. Pseudo elements are actually the best part of drawing with CSS, because you understand them at some point. My favorite pseudo class elements are uh, before and after. So these are really, really useful, because every single HTML element is secretly three elements in disguise. So we don't have to mark them up. They are just there by magic. And we can style them, which is very convenient. And yeah, so I have one element. And immediately before that is the before element. And immediately after it is the after element without having to mark it up. So I can use it in a head to draw some eyes. Or I can use it in real life to make a tooltip, for example. This tooltip uses the basic shape of a rectangle, basic shape of a triangle at the bottom, and it has some text in it. it. It's only one HTML element. I don't have to mark up the little triangle. I can just use it an after or a before element. So that makes it semantic. That makes it usable. Uh, that gives me a very good overview. Like I only want to do one HTML element for a tooltip. I don't want to do two just to have the little fin at the bottom be its own element. That doesn't make much sense to me. I want to have an HTML element that makes sense as a whole. So I like to utilize before and after in CSS to create that effect. But as I said, we can also do useless things, and we can draw eyes on our zombie. And box shadow is another tool I use a lot in drawing, because what we can do here very nice. Uh, the syntax of box shadow is something that I could I didn't know by heart when I first started, and ever since I started drawing with CSS, it's it kind of I I now remember. So the first one is moves the box shadow to the right. We don't need that for our eye. Second moves it down. We need that. And the third one blurs. That looks kind of weird for our zombie, though, because we want to give it under-eye circles and make it look really tired or really dead. So there is also inset box shadow, which obviously moves the shadow into the element. That moves it to the left. We don't need that. That one moves it down, gives it heavy eyelids. And that one, again, blurs. So he has a lazy eye now. Yay, looks very tired. So if you just keep adding on and putting more and more elements into this, you might get something like this. And that's the finished image 
with a couple of animations in it. So I've animated the eyes or the box shadow in the eyes to make it blink. It's a 15 second animation or something. Uh, I've animated the drool. Uh, please never animate height or width unless you want to burn your fingers or unless the room is very cold and you want to heat it up. Because if you have an infinite uh, animation of height or width, that will lead to constant repainting, which makes your computer sound like an airplane. So please don't do that. What I did was uh, transform scale. So transforms are very, very useful for animations. Uh, and also there is a transform rotate animation to make the head move a little bit. I wanted to do the hands, like make a grabby thing, but that looked weird, but it would have been nice. So I promised you I have a slide for that. Why? Because why not? <laughs> Because it's fun, because I like it. I have a ton of fun doing this, especially when, when I'm waiting for trains or something. I like to do this because it, it's quite fast. You get really fast at it. And, and yeah, as I said, you learn stuff. It might not be all useful stuff that you learn, but some of these elements you can use in your day to day life as a designer or as a, a front end developer which is super helpful. And also learning new concepts and putting them in your mindset and using them for your work is, is something that you can only learn by doing something different. And so this is why I do that stuff. Also the community around this is very nice. There are now many people, especially on CodePen, that do these kinds of things and that share what they do. And not only do they now make CSS images, but they use things like three chairs to make it even more cool. So something grew out of this and something really amazing happened and people now work together, especially who knows CodePen? Obviously. <laughs> For those that don't, CodePen is an online editor that uh, gives you HTML, CSS and JavaScript and a little window that refreshes constantly when you type something so you can code online and then share your finished code with other people. And if you do something cool, it will get featured on the front page. Uh, so it's really nice and convenient and people started to band together and do cool stuff together. And there is also now a challenge, a 30 day challenge, I think. Uh, it's the daily CSS images. So in case I inspired you to do something really weird, uh, go and join that. You get an email prompt every single day that has a new topic like superheroes or bears or monsters. And I think there was a zombie in there too. Um, and, and you just create one code pen, share it and have fun with it and look at other people's stuff. They really make cool things. Do I use CSS images in production and should you? No. <laughs> Please don't. Um, well, they're not, not really just no, but um, this zombie that I just made. So if somebody contradicted me and said, do a zombie for our website and do it in CSS, I wouldn't do it that way that I did. I would use an SVG. Why? Because it's a lot less code. It's a lot less CSS. It's a lot less messy and error prone. It would be an SVG. Everything would be fine. When do I use CSS images in production? When they're really tiny. When they are one element or most two. If I can do an SVG, I will usually do an SVG because yeah, it's, they are just as easy to animate if I do inline SVGs. So these CSS images are really just experiments. They are something that I use to learn and to create and to have fun with. Uh, it's, it's the same mindset of why do we even draw photorealistic drawings when we can just take a picture? Why do we use CSS to make images when we can just use an SVG? Same thing. Also, I suck at Illustrator, so I like that. But I wouldn't use it in production or I wouldn't use a complex uh, CSS image in production just because it blows up the CSS and the code and it's unnecessary. 
So what did we learn aside from some tricks that I use to create CSS images? So uh, hacking box shadow and uh, doing weird things with shapes. Well, I encourage you all to play and to create something really ridiculous because you might learn something. You might learn something really cool. You might create something that's a lot of fun to you and to other people. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to be something grand. It doesn't have to be something super awesome. But create something for yourself. Have fun with code and make code magic again for yourself. Because this is really how we keep this culture alive, because we're passionate about it. So find something that you love and that really <laughs> engages you, and then play with it. Also, learn new things. Don't get stuck in your rut. Don't just be the person that takes the newest issue, codes it, makes a pull request, get the next issue. Learn something new, whether it be Vue.js or whatever SAS mix in stuff. Something fun and create some. And then, once you're good at it, you can put it into your job in case it makes sense. And remember, just because it's useless doesn't mean it, it's a waste of time. Because everything we create with code is by default not a waste of time because we create content. And if it's something fun, then it can't be a waste of time because it's a cool hobby. I need socks. I don't need socks. But <laughs> at the same time, it's not a waste of time because I enjoy it and because I have fun. So here are some resources. Um, go on CodePen, look at other people's things. They really create awesome stuff. And check out the CSS Daily Images Challenge in case I inspired you to do something ridiculous and to have fun with it. And no matter what you do in your job or in your free time, whatever you like to make, I encourage you to create something and to share it. And if you make CSS images, please send them to me on Twitter. I would love to see them. And I'm always happy when people, after my talks, show me all their cool pins. So please go out there and create something fun, create something that you're passionate about and that you enjoy. And thank you very much. One, two. Please Which have a seat. Attitude? Thank you, thank you. Cool. Um, so we have a, a number of questions from Twitter. Nothing on a paper. That's right, of course. Why not? <laughs> Crafty. <laughs> uh, let's let's start with this. Uh, what, do th what are your feelings about uh, drawing and animating SVGs? Uh, I like it a lot, actually. It's something different than what drawing with CSS is, obviously, because that is about the challenge of, of uh, creating something with code. Uh, SVGs is something that makes sense, that I do for work, and, and that is really practical. So I love that we have SVGs now. Uh, I love that we can use them in production and that we can animate them just as well as we would as, as CSS, that we can actually use CSS animations on them, uh, that we can work with JavaScript on them. Okay. So I really love uh, SVGs and animations. I saw you raised hand when Anton asked about XML, so because SVG is XML, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, <clears throat> why not Illustrator? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what tools help you to draw in CSS? Just plain editor. Just plain text editor? And yeah. Like, account, like live reload, code pen, anything? Yeah, like? yeah. I, I usually draw on code pen because of the live reload. I also don't sketch. I, I don't have an idea when I start. I just move the blocks around and see what fits, which is why it takes me a bit longer. But yeah, I don't use anything else, just code pen. Okay, a uh, question from Margarita on Twitter. Uh, do you ever feel limited by CSS functionality? Do you have favorite CSS library to extend it maybe? Um, for, yeah, sometimes it's a bit limiting, especially with masking, because masking is, uh, is a bit complicated. I need to learn that more. 
but now we got clip path, so I had a couple of problems yeah. with uh, making gradients into uh, borders. That was a bit weird, but now that I can do clip pass, that's gone. So yeah, clip pass is, and, and masking are tools that I'm very happy that we have now. But what's what's they're lacking from CSS? Like uh, conical gradients, infinite pseudo elements? Con conic, yeah, conic <laughs> gradients and, and pseudo. If, if we had infinite uh, pseudo elements, I would say I, I'm not going to use SVGs ever again. <laughs> but yeah, that would be great. I would love that. Yeah, great. Uh, next question from Ivan uh, from Twitter. Uh, what tools have you used uh, to live code on your slides? Like, oh, that's uh, I use Reveal.js as like the the yeah and that has a uh, a plugin that's called Live Code, I think. Mm, what an interesting name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you think about generating CSS feature from graphics? Gross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There, there is no real reason to do it in production, but obviously somebody had fun with it and well, made it. So there is a reason. Why not? <laughs> of course, of course, you can do everything. I'm fine with that. No, somebody had fun doing it, so why not? There are a couple of libraries uh, that do that, and and yeah. But, it's, but it's, I guess it's not the way you, you learn CSS, it's, for real. No, because what you really do is you just make an endless gradient. Well, yeah. So, yeah, it's it doesn't use any of the functionality of CSS. It just uses one long gradient. OK, uh, any any other questions? Let me, let me check. I guess there are a few. For some reason, performance question. Uh, <laughs> I think small CSS images are faster than regular yes. IMG. Yes. Is there something uh, to it, or I'm just delusional? Is it? No, it's because it's. Uh, I guess it's a byte thing. If you have an SVG that is really complex and complicated, it becomes big too. So if you right. have a bunch of uh, HTML elements, that becomes convoluted. And so, uh, small CSS is images are bite size smaller than small SVG images. I've tried that out. Okay, and but are they it. more performant? Well, I'm not so good with performance per se, but I guess because they're smaller, maybe, and they don't need a separate request, could be. But I'm not an expert on that. Please okay. don't quote me on any of that. OK, it was a question from Alexi uh, from Moscow. And um, the one question from Dmitry, uh, what's your favorite trick in CSS? Because like CSS is not meant to be drawing no. tools. <laughs> and uh, you, we have to use a lot of tricks, like yes. clipping things. Yeah. And, yeah, what's your favorite trick? Uh, yeah, my favorite one is, is probably pseudo elements and using them to just make small things really big. And, and yeah, I, probably pseudo elements are the most useful to me. I use them on every single picture, and I use them in production a lot now. Okay, oh, my, but my favorite is is uh, box shadow because you can you yeah. don't you don't have to blur it. Yeah. So every time like border is like limiting me, I yeah. I, I you add a box give shadow. up and s put like uh, hundreds of box shadows, which yeah, is not yeah. really performant, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it works. <laughs> yeah, but you get over some challenges with box shadow. That's true. It's it's very useful and nice. And just uh, just uh, just not a question, but a uh, phrase like, uh, "Thank you for the speech." I'm a designer. I I know code a little, but literally every everything I do, anything I do is feels magic. So like, oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. I envy you. <laughs> right. So that's it for questions, and thank you for 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 a great talk. Thank you.